Hello. Here's a super quick guide as to how you can check your own computer to see if, if you can have Windows 10 put on it. Um, it's completely free. No need for on-site visits, no need for hassles, no need for anything. You can do it yourself. It takes about 10 minutes. Um, and I'll show you how to do it. So here we go. Um, start your computer. Um, when you see the desktop, move your mouse down to the taskbar, right click and select Start Task Manager. Yours will probably start in the Applications tab, so click Performance. And you'll see CPU Usage History, and there's some little graphs there. Graphs plural is important. If you see one graph, then your computer will not like Windows 10. If you see two graphs or more, your computer will be happy with Windows 10. So tick. Then look at physical memory on the bottom left. Total, it's in megabytes, not gigabytes. So total, if that total is 2000 or higher, Windows 10 will work. This says 4095, which is four gigabytes of RAM, um, which is the sweet spot. Four gigabytes of RAM, Windows 10 will work very well on four gigabytes of RAM. It's a bit clunky on two gigabytes, but more on that later. So as a general rule, if you see two graphs or more, and the total is 2000, or higher, Windows 10 will work. Next criteria is hard drive space. Let's have a look at the hard drive. Open up Windows Explorer, move your mouse over to the C drive, right click on it and select properties. Very quick visual clue. If you see at least 25% free, this has almost got exactly 25% free. If you see at least 25% free, then you've got enough hard drive space to install Windows 10. Um, Windows 10 will not install if it doesn't have enough space to do its business, download, configure, unpack, all sorts of things. It needs workspace in order to install. As a general rule, if you've got at least 25% free, that is, um, that's gonna be fine. So um, yeah, that's that. The next thing is, is the possible contentious issue, and that's the graphics card. Now, um, let's have a look at where you find that. If you click the Start button, right-click on Computer, and select Manage, that will bring up the Management Console there, Computer Management Console. Click Device Manager on the left column, and then on the Display Adapters bit, click the little triangle. It will say, well, this one says Virtual Box Graphics Adapter, because this is a virtual machine. It's not a real computer. It is, but it isn't. Uh, yours will say something, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel. As a general rule, um, you can get quite bogged down in what the actual graphics card is and you can get easily confused. So we can do a very quick visual test which will give you um, an indication of whether your computer is Windows 10 compatible. So rather than get bogged down with specific graphics card models, you need to look at the back of your computer which will look something like this. Now, I've labeled a few things. The key thing here is really whether it's horizontal or vertical. So if you get the cable from your monitor and you trace it back down to where your PC is, if it plugs into a horizontal socket, like the ones at the bottom, then I'm pretty much sure that Windows 10 will be compatible with a graphics card. That's because any graphics cards released, actual physical expansion cards, at the time Windows 7 were released, are supported by Windows 10. So don't worry. So if it goes, it doesn't matter whether it uses a DVI, which is a white one, or the VGA, which is the blue one, or the HDMI, it's going to work with Windows 10 if it's a horizontal plug-in graphics card. You only get complications, really, if you're using the vertical socket, because the vertical socket is usually, well, it will be, next to all the other sockets where you plug things in like your keyboard and mouse. That socket is on the motherboard. So what you're using there is called onboard graphics. Onboard graphics is cheaper, it gives you a cheaper PC because you haven't got to put in a separate graphics card with its, you know, all the associated costs. So onboard graphics is very much for the budget systems, but nonetheless, it makes a perfectly good system, except that some onboard graphics chips are not supported by Windows 10. 
Now, let's clarify that. So if you are using a graphics card, don't worry, Windows 10 will work. But if you're using the vertical socket because you're using onboard graphics, then it might not. If it says Intel in Device Manager, the bit we just looked at, if it says Intel in there for your graphics card, it'll probably work. If it says NVIDIA, there are some old NVIDIA graphics chipsets that don't work with Windows 10, mainly because NVIDIA have not produced drivers for them. It's quite rare, it's very specific onboard graphics, but nonetheless, they don't work. And you would need to put a new graphics card in. So, let's have a very quick summary. If you want to install Windows 10 on your computer, and this is what I would check if I came round, and this should be what other people check if they come round as well, any dual core CPU will be fine. Two gig of RAM as an absolute minimum is fine. Disk space, roughly 25% free space. Then Windows 10 will install, and it will install quite happily, and it should work. Uh, if you've got four gig of RAM, then it's gonna work better. But again, we'll discuss that in a minute. Uh, the key problem areas are graphics cards. Some older models, specifically older onboard graphics chipsets, aren't supported. Um, on laptops, because I haven't mentioned laptops particularly, because everything's been common to desktops and laptops so far, some laptop Wi-Fi devices have a few issues um, with Windows 10. Very rare, but nonetheless exists. Um, and of course, the only thing I haven't mentioned is your programs and applications. Uh, Windows 10 will remove programs that are known to be incompatible. Um, but it isn't a problem, uh, as I will explain at the end. Uh, of course, the next issue really is uh, one about activation. So when you install Windows 10, are you installing a new copy of Windows? Well, technically you are. Would you have to pay for it? Well, Microsoft would very much like you to pay for it. But... All of the Windows 10 upgrades that I've done so far have activated without needing to buy Windows 10. So you should not have to buy a copy of Windows 10. So let's talk about extras. Just these are just last minute thoughts that um, um, complete this whole um, guide. Um, a new graphics card. Yes, you might need a new graphics card if your existing graphics card or motherboard chipset isn't compatible with Windows 10. It's quite rare, but it does happen. Don't worry, new graphics cards that will work with Windows 10 are about 30, 40 quid. That's it. Nothing more than that. Um, do you need to fit an SSD, a solid state drive? That's a good idea for two reasons. One, uh, you reset the um, drive breaking and losing all your data clock because obviously you're putting a new drive in and the drive that's in there is going to be pretty old now and the older drives get the more likely they are to break and the second reason is that they're significantly faster 10 times faster orders of magnitude faster than your old mechanical drive so do you need to fit extra ram as well well, extra RAM on an old machine, I think, is probably false economy. You've got to source it. There's usually a premium for certain ones because of demand and supply. So I wouldn't necessarily put extra RAM in. If you've got two gig, then the better thing to do would be to put a solid state drive in instead. And you can clone your operating system onto that drive and it will run faster and sort of offset the need to have extra RAM because it's the mechanical drive that's slowing your machine down. If you've got 4 gig of RAM, then you don't need to put extra RAM in at all. But there is a temptation to put in extra RAM if you've only got 2 gig. Um, what I'm saying is, if you're going to have an SSD to um, help with your data integrity and um, speed, then you don't need to put the extra RAM in. Save yourself some money. You can reuse your old drive. I'm not saying take the drive out and throw it away. You can reuse your old drive and keep that in your in your computer if it's a desktop and use that for data backup and storage as well. So you're not losing anything. You're gaining an extra speed um, machine because uh, the solid state drive is significantly faster. Um, but you're not losing anything. So 
Uh, that, that basically completes the video. Obviously, if you've got any questions and want to ask about this, then feel free to give me a ring. Um, but you don't necessarily need to have a call out. You don't necessarily need to have um, any great expense for this. Um, you just you can use this guide to check the things yourself and then see what you want to do. And if, you, if you're not happy doing the upgrade yourself, then obviously I'd be happy to do it for you. Um, there's an important thing to mention finally, and that is that if you're really not sure which um, programs are going to work or whether your machine will will take it, then um, I can actually do a complete no risk test. What I do is I take your existing drive and I clone it onto a solid state drive that I've got for testing. And then I perform the upgrade on that copy rather than your original drive. And so I can then see exactly what would happen if your machine was upgraded. And if there are any issues with programs being removed due to incompatibility or any drivers that have got a bit of a wobble. So I can try the upgrade out before it's actually performed. If that's appealing, um, then um, give me a ring and we can get things arranged. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching.